Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Ben, and uh, with me as always is Sky. Um, welcome to another episode of Natives in America podcast. Uh, so, it's been another week. It's time for another uh, release here. Um, I listened to this one, and uh, I'm still working on it right now, but I might as well make the intro because this episode is well I think what we called it was uh the being nice episode and it wasn't about being nice but we were talking about uh the complexities of maybe the word and uh what it leads people to do and I, it sounds like we got some good stuff going on here like uh it I couldn't quite land it and I almost called it the be be like Mike episode or the Jordan episode or uh Hell, I even thought, uh, you know, well, I was thinking it'd be like Mike uh, or something like that. Uh, maybe a storytelling episode because what we ended up talking about was, uh, oh, <laughs> we took a bunch of detours here, let's just say. So, uh, I think you guys will enjoy this. I, I haven't listened to the whole episode, but I remember a lot from it, and I think we uh, really enjoyed it. I'm going to start listening to it now as I edit it, and as soon as I can get it up, it'll be up. I mean, you're listening to it, so it'll be up. So, uh, welcome back, guys. And uh, if you're one of our followers that are coming, you know, whether you're subscribed or not, but you're still coming back, hey, we appreciate every view we get. So, uh, welcome back, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to go with it's it's being nice, or the being nice episode. So, uh this is episode seven, and as always, uh, I gotta give credit to Ronnie James at Ronnie uh, on Instagram at Ronnie James uh, Photography. Um, this is his photo, and it is of uh, this uh, lovely looking Native American man driving on the highway. <laughs> it's Sky and. Uh, uh, I think he kind of looks like he's thinking really hard and that's kind of and reflecting as he's driving and I kind of felt like that had a little something to do with what we're doing in this episode so like I said thanks for coming back and tuning in guys uh, if you're new to the podcast please uh, subscribe and follow follow us you know each week as I release an episode and uh, if you would uh, hit that notification button so that each week when we release a new episode, you guys will be here to, uh, you, you'll, you'll get noticed first, you know, so, uh, like, like I said, welcome back and thank you. Uh, this is the Being Nice episode, and here we go. What's up? What's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> it feels so, uh different than the way we've been starting off, but I figured from now on, maybe we should go a little more formal. Yeah? I, I mean, know. Or at least in the, I be- think in the a, beginning. In the beginning, let's set it up. Have a set routine, at least. Yeah, well, there you go. This is, yeah. uh, this is Benjamin Juan and Sky uh, You know, I've been I, saving everything on the computer, like, since I started working on this whole problem that we got about memory and all that. Uh-huh. Uh, I just been calling it the Sky and Ben podcast. Uh-huh. So, like I think we should discuss it further to where we actually establish something. Like maybe you don't want it to be our names. Yeah, I know. That's like uh, I was thinking about that earlier too. Um, kind of going back to the like I'm leaving work, you're going into work. Kind of yeah. like a yeah. What what is that? What what does that bring up to your mind? Like what does that sound like? Uh, like, like I mean, I see what you're saying. I, I mean, I'm clocking out, you're clocking in, and we're kind of in the middle of it. Um, but it's like kind of like a smoke break. smoke break. You know, just sort of like, that's when we link, that's when we cross, cross paths. Cross like, paths. I, I, we're, I think we're, we're just, on to something there, crossing paths. Like, uh, uh, maybe, I yeah. Call, I don't want to call maybe. it the In and Out podcast. <laughs> You're coming home, break. and I'm like sitting here, kind of hanging out, waiting to go to work. So, yeah, we're we're on different wavelengths, but somehow it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, 
there's a common there's something common but it's i think it's just maybe your chaos and my chaos yeah sort of trying to link up you ever uh see the experiments with or you know it's mathematical we we've you were actually in my math classes back in the day like ahead of your class and so you understand what i'm talking about you know when you add like a I don't want to say frequency. I see. Uh, I want to say amplitude. It's like the math problem where you make you increase something by a little bit by adding two separate signals that have that. Like if we're talking about a sound wave, and you match two of them together, when you when you play them over each other, they increase. Uh, like, like when you're editing music and you oh do yeah. two copies on top of each other's in the tracks. Yeah. And it, it, it like amplifies I, the sound. Oh yeah, you know what I'm talking uh, about. No, that's uh, doubling. Yeah, it, it doubles uh, up. Like you're, you're, you're uh, like there's canceling canceling tunes. Like if you had done the exact opposite, it would disappear. You wouldn't hear it. Yeah. But when you add two of them together and they both have that same, I guess, amount of power or amplitude, they increase or double. And they become louder. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, that's that's like a different. It's like more power, more power to it, or something. Yeah. And sound wise, when you add two tracks that are the same, almost more, a more fuller sound. Yeah. I yeah. had a point to make beyond that, but like we're on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> I, I proved the example to you, and I think we're on the same page now. But I think there's something beyond that, and I've completely lost it. Uh, uh, so what's, so yeah, that's what's up. Um, so all right, all right. frequency, so, okay, wavelengths. All right, so, all right. So we, what we were talking about is uh, the title, right? Yeah. And you're saying you're you come in and you have a certain energy and I I come I'm headed out on my energy I I think that's why I brought it up was to say hey <laughs> like we're on different wavelengths and that kind of they meld in a different way where if we we're both amped up and we put them together we we'll just double if I'm like low down ready to go to work and you're coming home and you're like uh, I just want to relax. You got a whole different amplitude going on, or something, a different wavelength, and we add them together. We wind up with a podcast with a certain wavelength that like, a special, like a fingerprint, you know, a special wavelength. Yeah, kinda like a. I'm gonna turn my shit up. I can't hear it. I don't think. Alternative frequency with. Can you hear me now? There we go. There we go. All right. I mean, wait. What's up? We've never talked about this, but like, when you go to work, are you you get you app yourself up because it's in the nighttime? Like, cause I mean, I think of I think of work as getting up in the morning. Ah, uh, all right. Well, hold on. I gotta turn my shit down. I got excited and turned it way too. Um. So this kind of this kind of plays into what we said before about coffee yeah remember like um, yeah yeah uh -huh. like it was like damn it I've never worked overnight before now I'm kind of used to it but like I don't know I, I feel like I'm constantly trying to get enough sleep and I never get it like I'm chasing sleep and at the same I almost feel like a little kid you know like a little kid that doesn't want to go to sleep because so much is going on you know yeah. what I mean? Like, you, when you were a kid, you're like, fuck, I know there's still a party going on, and you're trying to tell me to go to sleep, but I want to stay out here, and like, where the action is. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of how it is. Like, I feel like every day I need to dedicate a little bit of my day towards enjoying myself. But at the same time, I absolutely know I'm completely unregistering. I'm not getting enough goddamn sleep. But I'm still, like, trying to stay up and enjoy myself. Mm. So I'm constantly trying to balance that out where there's time when I'm awake and time where I was like, damn it, if I don't go to sleep, 
I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be shit faced at work. I'm just gonna be like a zombie. Yeah, not productive. Yeah, yeah, you know, like the the other night, man, maybe a week ago, it was like after lunch time. I ate a big meal and I was fucking up there and like I have I was tired already because I don't think I even went to sleep before work. Like that day, like something was going on and I was just up. And I was standing there trying to read this label on this box, and I was holding it, and I was reading it, and at some point my eyes closed, and I fell forward, and I almost like smashed my head on the, the beam, <laughs> like the the beam, the shelf, Damn. the solid metal beam. I almost fell and hit it, but like the movement of like falling forward, it like caught my attention, and I like snapped back, and I blocked it. Like I just, you know, slammed my hand on the beam, like, <laughs> bing, like Damn. Whoa, like, like, whoa, I almost just, like, I was trying to, my whole job is, you, you read, hold on, I got to turn my mic down a lot. My whole job is, like, um, I'm reading labels going, all right, this goes here. Like, I'm going through my memory, like, where the hell do these go? Uh, and, and lately at work, man, they've been rearranging shit so much. Like, I don't know where shit is, so, like, I'm, like, I'm having to kind of wing it and hopefully get some a box where it needs to go, but it's like it's almost like I work at like a fucking delivery warehouse. Like I'm putting shit on the shelf and I'm tracking it in my mind, and it's a uh, it's like problem solving, but at the same time it's irritating as fuck because shit's never kept track of. But anyway, I was standing there and I was like reading the label. It's like all right, it goes in this shelf. It goes on this bay, and while I was reading it, like, it took me, like, 10, 15, 20, half an hour to read this label, and the whole time, like, I just kept dozing off, so I start reading it again. I'd be like, all right, all right, no, 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 all right, I'm awake, I'm awake, and I start reading it again, like, all right, this show, this bay, this aisle, wait a minute, wait, 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 this bay, this shelf, and I go to put it on the shelf, but I'm like, no, 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 wait a minute, the label says I need to put it on the, this aisle, on this bay, and it's num and this is the price, and the next thing I knew, I fucking fell forward, and I caught the shelf with my hand, like, like, oh, like, alright, this is it, like, I'm too, I'm, I'm so tired that it's dangerous for me to work. So what did I do? I fucking went and sat down on the lawn furniture and set like an alarm. I, I went I went and sat down on the display lawn furniture and I set an alarm for 15 minutes. And I fucking went to sleep. Like it might work like, you know, you work nine hours, you got a lunch and you got two 15 minute breaks. Yeah. If I'm so fucking tired, and this isn't the first time, like, there was times where I walked, like, ten feet with my eyes closed and didn't realize they were closed. I, I was so fucking tired. I, like, I just oh. walked, like, ten feet. Like, I could have fell over something. I could have, like, you know, fell on something. Like, I just walked straight forward and my eyes were asleep and I wasn't even aware of it. And then I, like, snapped, too. I was like, oh, I'm awake. So, I'm saying, like, last week... I almost hit my head like twice in a row on the bar in front of me because I was so tired. And I wound up setting the alarm and going to sleep. Like, I was like, all right, I'm taking my 15 minute right now because it's too dangerous to continue working right now. Yeah. All right, man. Damn. Well. All right. That was pretty. So you don't go in <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, oh, Don't be tired. So here we go, brother. Let's kick it off. You were saying, all right, so every time we record, we're like, hey, like, you got a subject? Hey, what do you want to talk about? And I, and I like to defer to you because you got, you know, what I always like to buy to is you're your own man when it comes to ideas. So today you said you wanted to talk about... Uh, what was it? Being a nice, being good to people, or being nice? What is it? Nah, being nice? I was um. Excuse not me. Not so much wanting to be known as the nice guy, but I 
actually not being the nice guy, but you know, you're you're a dickhead for a reason, or you're uh, maybe people mistake your niceness for you know you just being that type of a person. Yeah. But yeah, then when something else happens and you you seem more like an asshole or a dickhead. But I, I guess an example is uh, I'm, I've been watching uh, the Michael Jordan documentary. It's called uh, The Last oh, Dance. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I watched like, the first two episodes. <clears throat> yeah, so they... He's, he seems like a pretty cool dude, but... Yeah. Uh, I, I was, think... But, I was surprised how much shit he taught. Yeah, no, no, but he's yeah, a competitor. because I'm doing my shit, you better do your shit. Yeah. So, but like, but I still love him. Nah, I I have more. I have more respect for him because he was on point from the beginning. Yeah, at such I mean, a young age, like so young, but it's like I'm gonna be a champion, and he fucking did it. Yeah, I'm gonna be a champion from here on. Like from, but, my, I'm only gonna get better, and he did. But. Like, well, let me ask you this. Like, it wasn't because he was a nice guy. No. Was he, it? he, the part that I don't think anybody ever saw was, or paid attention to, maybe it was him cutting. <coughs> Woo! Yeah. I was having a, a little smoke there, and I got, I got choked up because I was talking and breathing out at the same time alright so um, at the same time it seemed like he was like cutting in on his uh, his uh, I don't know what the hell you call him his teammates his coaches he had that whole weird relationship with his with the one coach and the co he was a weird ass guy like there was this whole other side like I was a child when all this shit was going on. Like, I'm thinking 95, 96 Bulls were the fucking shit, right? Uh-huh. Right? Like, the height, like, Jordan was the shit, apparently, all through high school, too. Like, high well, school, into college, he was already the shit. And then he, when he got into college, they went that much farther. And it sounded like he went from college early to the fucking the NBA. Uh, no, well, he did, he, he did this, like, I think he did three years at North Carolina. He, yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. He left, like, a year early. Yeah, yeah, but, um, but, even then, he was kicking ass and taking names. Oh, oh yeah, no, nah, there wasn't much more for him to achieve in college. He was, yeah. he needed to go play with he, the big boys. Shit, he had, he had received what he needed and he moved on. Yeah. That was incredible. You know, that, that was a great documentary. It was like uh, the, yeah. the last dance, right? Yeah. They wanted to get that final uh, the final championship. They wanted to do like seven in a row or something like that. Uh, six. Six. Well, yeah. I was fucking... I was alive during that time and so were you. <laughs> and like... Like, I, even as a child, I didn't follow basketball, but I was aware of Michael Jordan. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was uh, I got like, you. like, like, sure, there's plenty of people out there that grew up and their lives revolved around basketball. And they knew who Michael Jordan was and all the players' names, like the entire team. But, like, even me, you know, growing up on the res. Like, I barely follow basketball. I think my first basketball game where I actually learned shit was with my pops. He he had, uh, we had gone to the America West Arena, like, oh, shit. you know, when it was still the America West Arena. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, it's not that. Like, it's not that now. But we went there, and we, I saw a son, the Suns play, and my dad taught me about basketball, like, he taught me about the quarters and why they were doing everything they were doing. That was the first time I started tracking. When was that? I don't even remember who played. I just know I was with... Uh, like I told you the other day about my Uncle Mel. 
he was recording the game for his channel and we were up there like on this fucking like where they had like the uh you know where they run the lights and shit we were up there in the booth on a in a like i was a kid i didn't think anything about it like i was just like ah we're up here but we were up there in the booth like he was recording and the dude who runs the lights had his old big ass board and they were doing that and my dad started teaching me about the quarters and like there's four quarters in the game and yeah. I go into overtime and there's fouls and there's fucking like strategy there's rules. And, yeah. and like the first time I ever learned the game of basketball oh. and it was in the America West arena like I think I was even, I think it might have even been a school day or something like I just went on a trip with my dad, and it was basketball, and, you know. Oh, that's awesome. That's pretty cool. That's my association with basketball. And I was, <laughs> I was saying, like, about that time, like, I don't know if it was 95, 96. Like, I must have been, I don't know, five or six. It must have been, like, 91, 92. 93 like it was the 90s it had to be the 90s because i wasn't that old like he had yeah. to, he had to really like it took a lot for me to catch on to the concept of there's three quarters and all this shit was going on like oh uh, yeah uh, but i was old enough to capture it like so if you mm -hmm. think about that like my son if i tried to teach him the quarters now he probably wouldn't understand yeah so i don't know Oh, I got you. As a... the Suns, the Suns were playing at the America West Arena. So, I mean, there's, I think they're still there, but it's a different name now. Uh, I think it's a Talking Stick Arena or no, something. Oh, really? I think so. I Is could be wrong. The but... same place? Cause I it might be a new place. Like, I don't know. I just went with my boy to the Talking Stick Arena, me and uh, uh, Christopher James, and we. Uh, we we went and saw the Black Keys at the at the Talking Stick Arena and like goddamn shit was expensive. We got shit faced and it was a great show. But like when we, when you say nosebleeds, we were like second to last seat, the highest you could go, and it was still a good show. Oh. <laughs> I mean, but, but like, is that the exact location where the America West Arena was before? Like, uh, no, nah, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't, I'm more, I, I'm more I feel, I feel like that they shit. built a brand new stadium. I really don't. I didn't, I, really... I didn't recognize it. It looked all weird when I walked up. Like, where the fuck did this shit come from? Um, I'm really horrible at the history of all that. Stuff, yeah. but. All all I knew for sure was that it was America West it, Arena. I knew that. Was, I remember that. It was, and it's not anymore. Yeah. And I was there. Well, it's just like fucking like, all those pavilions change names every other four years. It's a different. It's a different um, company or something. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's getting bought out and whatnot. Um, right, oh, so, so let me ask you this. Go have ahead. you had, like well two questions right. and like bite on whatever one you want to bite on but yeah, yeah yeah i guess is there something in comparison that you do with your with what you do and you're like i'm jordan you know like same thing jordan's feeling like uh, is there something you're in when you're in your pocket are, doing are you saying is there a time when i feel my best I like, guess like, what are you like what are you what at Jordan's level? What activity are you doing when you're you're at Jordan's level? Fuck you you got me, bro. Like what I've been feeling lately is I'm not playing at my most potential level. Like wherever I wherever I wind up working I do a good job, but I'm not doing what I'm capable of doing. And I think the best I've ever felt, the best I ever like learned and did and felt like excited about the next day, and I just kept showing up, was whenever I worked with medicine. And with the, 
in the fire department. I, I worked I worked with the wildland firefighters, and it was there was a a bunch of water that was completely shitty because of like inter office bullshit, but it was still an experience that like changed my life. And so I had worn a uniform. I was in the newspaper, like doing my thing, and um, when I did the EMT thing, like I, I felt like my life was going in a weird ass direction that I just didn't understand or feel like I wasn't putting everything into it. And then, like, I had this call with my mom, and she was saying, like, "What the hell are you doing with yourself?" And I'm like, "Ah, like." There have been times where I just lived on her couch and like didn't do shit. Like just got fat. Like just ate, ate and hung around and just didn't do shit. Every now and then, you know, I would knock out like a project, but like I just was going nowhere. And she cut, she hit me up and it was like I was living in Ajo at the time, and she just said, "Hey, uh, what are you doing? What are you doing up there? Like." What, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing with yourself? And I was just like, ah. Uh. Like, I was like, ah, oh, sh-. Like, it, it was just kind of like, I, I don't, what What are you doing? Like, do you have any direction? And I was just like, oh, I'll show you. Like, yeah, I, I can get direction. Yeah, like, I've been thinking, like, we're always talking about movies. And, like, uh, there were movies in my life that made me feel really good like this deep down connection and I think we've talked about that before is feeling connected to people uh. and uh, movies like Daylight with Sylvester Stallone like he's like a he's like an emergency demolition guy like he's like a, a emergency response so if something disastrous happens they show up and take care of it uh. Like, I watched that movie and felt good. And then, I like, the movie that made me, like, I, I remember watching it. I was out in the village in the middle of the night, and this show came on called uh, Bringing Out the Dead. It was Nicolas Cage and a, a whole lineup of other actors that were the shit. Like, uh, that fucking guy. I, I don't know, a bunch of people. And uh, it was, it was paramedics like saving lives and like showing up when the disaster shit popped off they would show up and try to save somebody and it always made me think like oh that that's the life that's the that's how you do it that's the, yeah, I felt good just thinking about it and I remember I had just watched that I was in Coldfields in the middle of the night everybody passed out and I was just sitting there like flipping through the channels and I saw that shit and I played it and I was just watching these guys like trying to save lives and trying to get somebody who couldn't breathe to breathe like they were using science and medicine to save a life and I was just like yeah like damn it that I, I felt emotional about it like invested like yes I want to I want to do that that would be cool that would be really cool and I remember I had been thinking about it, just kind of turning it over in my mind. And then one day, my mom just called me, and she was all pissed off. Or, I don't know. Uh, she was on a mission to see what the fuck I was doing with myself. I think I was like just stalling out with my life. And she's like, what are you doing with me? I was like, oh, well, you know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do? I want to be an EMT. I'm going to do that. And then I went out and did it. I left Ajo and moved to Tucson. I slept on my friend's floor. He let me live in his living room on his floor, and I lived there like a year and a half, maybe two years. On his, no, nah, it wasn't that long because <laughs> we finally started butting heads. But it was like <laughs> he, he gave me a place to live. I, I asked him, could I just stay at your place? Cause my 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 class is up the road. And I would go there, and, like, I lived there on his living room floor. Like, there was all these issues, you know. A guy and his lady and their kid, and there's, like, they, they're taking care of their brother and his friend just living in their space. 
and it was awkward. Yeah, that's it was awkward. That's it was fucking awkward, but that's how I went back to Tucson. I asked for a favor of one of my old friends from growing up. Uh, and uh damn. I had been out of school so long, like I, I flunked myself out like two years in. And to come back to school I was like, right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna half ass this shit and like or no, I'm not gonna have it. I was saying it's been so long I don't know if I'm ready, so I did like the the half ass class. It was a uh, it was like a one before that. It was it was like first responders, which is what they teach. They teach cops. They teach uh, EMTs. They teach like anybody who has comes in contact with injured people. They have first responders, firefighters, police officers, fucking everybody who responds has this simple training. And. Uh, So I, I, I started off school, uh, I did it easy, and there was another one I took, which was like a ambulance operations, and all we did, every class was like, we'd run scenarios, and we'd, you know, practice what we learned, it would be a physical thing, and then finally, like, the next year, I did the actual class, and like, they were, they were fucking hardcore, they were like, uh, um, you you couldn't miss a single day. If you missed a single day, you were out. Oh ah, shit! It was like if you if you're late ten minutes, you're out. And they didn't fuck around, and I did it for a semester, the next semester, and I got certified. And I just <laughs> I never did the EMT shit. I always remember, I always wanted to go back, and like the funny thing about it, like the video I watched, the movie, bringing out the dead with Nicolas Cage, like turns out what they were doing was the level of a paramedic, not even an EMT. <laughs> so like I didn't even learn that shit when I actually did it. It was just like the simplest shit that we did, you know. <laughs> put, put oxygen on somebody's face, you know. You know, bandage some wounds. You know, clean some wounds. You know, make sure he's <laughs> breathing. But we didn't. We didn't do no medicine. We didn't do the the you know airway down the throat. It was. Uh, I realized that was the bottom of the totem pole. And I, uh, and I wanted more. I wanted more. Fuck! I wound up doing more in the following years, but I don't know. I don't even know why we're talking this deep. Nah, you're, you're talking about when you feel you're, you're at your best, or when you're yes. okay. you channeling that. Alright, I, I went too deep. I gave that, too much. No, no, you, but you. The answer is when I did that shit, I felt fucking fantastic. I was mm. proud and fucking like, I'm making a difference. Motherfucker. Like, when there was a fire and I was a firefighter. It was like I'm I'm fucking making a difference and it was shit on our land. Like Kit Peak, they rent that land from the tribe, but it's there and it's like a it's like they're part of the biggest network of, of Star Watchers, like and and they're our part, you know, like Kit Peak belongs to us, the mountain belongs to us, and like Kit Peak, the the observatory it's like a nice kind of U of A thought out the nation relationship that's just beautiful and it feels good. Uh, well, what I'm about saying? I was out there and I I fire fought and like we helped protect the telescopes from burning. Like we chopped up a, a like shit ton of wood, bushes, all that shit. Cleared it out. Oh, this is when this is when you were a firefighter. So when I was a firefighter, I felt fucking good, dude. I was rocking the uniform and I was fucking marching up mountains, driving around looking for smoke, and we go and like attack that shit, and like we were protecting something on our land, like oh, it was okay. on our land, like on a reservation, and like there was the village right there. It was a uh, Bontak. You know, yeah. pan, you know, Pantac. 
Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, there was a fire there. Like, there was a fire while we were off doing something else. And we wound up showing up there after my shift. Like, we came back super late. The sun was already down. Uh, I, it was, I was probably going into my 14th hour. I showed up early morning. I was 14 hours in. And suddenly we got a call like, hey, this fire that we put out earlier, it started again. And we went back out there. And it was like, oh, my first fire. I was so excited. And all it was was like one tree, that like the roots, the roots were on fire. And because of that, there was a fire in the middle of the tree. So like the tree was still there, but it was glowing from the inside. Oh, shit. And we showed up, and it was like my first fire, and like I had brand new boots, and my heart was pumping, and I remember, yeah. I remember tripping and slipping. Like I had this big bag of like this chemical foam on my back, and we were like, shoot, we walked up and shot the fire, and like that was another yeah. time, like in my life, where I felt fucking golden. Wow. Uh. Like top notch, like this is where I belong. Oh, like like painfully obvious. Like I tingle. I tingle doing it. Yeah, it was great. So yeah, wow, that's pretty cool. I want it. I want it back. Holy shit! What about you, man? Like you, you called me on it, and I went like way off the deep end. What about you? When um, when you felt like the shit, like, like when I felt like the shit, yeah. Or, or what did you specifically ask me? <laughs> it was like, <laughs> when I was like, well, when do you feel your at your, back. your when you're or when you're like when you're equivalent to what Jordan's feeling? Oh, or when you, yeah, yeah. The well, we are, well, we imagine he's feeling, you know. Well, yes. yeah, you know what? Jordan was doing the best he could, and he couldn't accept anything but the best. And that my that's what I, I that's that's my equivalent to that is this is what I suspect he felt like. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's how I felt when I was doing those two jobs. Like it just felt right. You know, uh, I think for me, it's not so much. I felt like Jordan in the moment, but I, I look back and I'm like, um, we were doing a lot. But uh, when I used to play and uh, with Ed and. Jonathan, Sissy, and Matt, like when we used to jam with Disregard May, and like we had songs and like May. breakdowns and two guitars and fast ass drummer. Like, I think I didn't understand how um, the technicality of what we were doing, it was just more fun and exciting. Yeah. To when we, to when I look back at it, and I'm like, that was, that was, that was me, you know. But it was kind of, it took some time to go past that for me to be like, oh shit, like, yeah, I was doing that. <laughs> um, but yeah. I don't. In the moment, I can't. I remember one time too. I had. <clears throat> there was this conference in Phoenix that uh, it was like I got invited to it. Yeah. To to present and what? do like pre to do a presentation. What? So you were a presenter at a conference uh, on what? Uh, on like the importance of like preserving traditional foods and yeah, oh, like how wow. to how to. Like how to cook it, and like I, I made some kailasa, and like I had a, I had like a, a presentation, like a booth where people would come to my table and learn. Nice. But then on on top of that, the conference there was a, uh, there was a banquet for for the students that got like a student of the year, and I had gotten student of the year that that year so I got to go to that conference that that banquet 
it was like a banquet within the conference, but it was everybody wasn't invited. It was, was kind of like you weren't, if you didn't get the scholarship, you didn't go. So um, I got to go to that, and you know, and and they gave they gave me money, and I got to invite you know my family. Yeah. And um, but it wasn't even any of that. It was more at the end they had like this. Uh, it wasn't like open mic. It was kind of like, if you want to say anything, you know, the mic's there. <laughs> and everybody went up and started thanking everybody. And, yeah. And <clears throat> I was, I didn't want to say nothing at first, but then and finally I, I, I got enough courage to get up there and. Nice. And, and kind of, you know, I just. I talked for a, a good a good while, you know, and I, I, you know, just naturally, you know, just telling um, stories of me going back to school and and like living right there at the at the where we where you lived, the teacher housing, like yeah, like just kind of like Same there was house. a there was a day where you know I was just like like this college was calling me like they wanted me there but you know i was just like just taking a, a really just a like a two credit class and then yeah i went there just to re-register for my the other half of the class and you know i had so many established relationships with different people there they were all like take this class take this class take this class and and uh I ended up fucking leaving the college with like a 14 credit um, schedule and I was only supposed to just get a two credit class and it was funny because I just walked home after that and it was like that was kind of like the funny part of the story was because like I mean I went to high school and I walked by this place a million times and could care less about it. And then going there and it actually being this place where I, I need to be. And it was like a funny moment, but kind of describing it was like, I don't know, like dumbass, like <laughs> it was in your back, in your backyard. Um, but, uh, then it's just like us natives being, cause it was a, it was a all tribal college conference. So it was nothing but natives. Yeah. So I think, you know, just kind of like, you know, just telling everybody that, you know, we're kind of holding it down. What, what, uh, what exactly was your presentation? Like, like if you ran us through it, like what, what would it be? Um, like seeds, like you gotta plant the seed, and I mean, then you gotta learn how to harvest. And so it was like a seasonal learning, like across the year, oh, across the year. Uh, it was it was kind of me talking about me learning about the the uh, autumn sixty day corn, the okay. hoon, and yeah. and kind of giving that info out. And then, like, but with the 60-day corn, it's not like regular corn that... Is it a hybrid? It, nah, it, it's, it's a... It's just one of those corns that grow fast, like a wheat? It's, you gotta, like, it's not like you can throw it in the fridge and it be preserved longer. It's like, you gotta eat it right then and there, or if you don't, then you gotta cook it and, wow, like, preserve it. I wonder if corn has telomeres. Uh, but there's so many varieties of corn. Yeah, yeah. And native corn, like it's like uh, it's like one of the three sisters is the beans, the squash, and the corn. But and and we have that in our tribe too. But like corn, I was I was I was pretty much just talking about me learning about the corn and and I made some like the night before, so like I had samples, you know, kind of. 
and I had like pictures of the garden where I planted stuff, and you know, I was just sort of like trying to walk them through the the process of it all. Um, but yeah, I know it was. I felt pretty, pretty and like not inspired, but I think it was just like I, I'm capable of. You know, being in the room or whatever, or um, I guess being able to talk to the room. I don't know. It was. It was just. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to be a motivational speaker, but like, you know, to be able to talk on the mic and I guess still a craft. I'm. I'm still trying to master. I think if you can be like hold it down on the microphone then I think I mean that's Jordan you know Jordan-esque but uh other than that that's all I can think of how old were you then? I don't know like 20 20 something 20 I want to say 24 but nah, I don't think so you maybe uh, do you remember doing the uh, the summer program at, at the UMC yeah yeah I do I I mean I I think do, do you remember Dr. I, Witty yeah I, I remember all of that I I really enjoyed it but I think that was kind of my realization that I wasn't that into science. <laughs> I mean, because it's very science based. Yeah, it was, yeah. And. I'm all, I'm all about it. Yeah. And so, I mean, I, I, I like the idea of other people liking science. But, <laughs> uh, I, I can do other things. Yeah. So, no, but no, you no. Do. But the, I do, do. The experience itself was pretty tight. I mean, being able to, like, stay there at the dorms and, you know, kind of, like, almost be, like, a college kid, but, you know, you're working and you're earning money and you got you got responsibilities. And it was just pretty, pretty happening. And I just, I, I, I think that would be pretty cool to do something similar, you know. Um, but maybe not so science based. Huh. Um, I, I like that it was like, like it, it was my exposure to medicine. Like it was. Oh yeah, yeah. I, and and I, it was really based on like trying to get people in that like maybe might not have that opportunity. Yeah. And I, I fucking, I loved it. Like, like, it wasn't just an experience in medicine. It was also like some college life stuff too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for real. Like living on the campus, it, it was it was very deeply associated with the U of A. Like I, I grew up, my mom is uh, went to the U of A. Like I want to go to the U of A. Like I've I've done several summer programs there, and I've always like, man, I want to go. Like I always saw it as where I belong. So, like, nah. when we did that, like, we were staying on campus, you know, going to the, the hospital, like, it was science-based, but, like, we were there at the epicenter of where all of it was going on. And you could run into anybody at any time and get exposed to people who, like, hell, the U of A is taking part in Mars missions. Well, yeah. You know, like... Ah, I, I mean that's too. still science, but that's how big the university is, and how important. Well, how important I, I think that's how big science is. It kind of yeah. has all these dimensions. Yeah, well, it's universally important to all of us and everything. I mean, hell, think, we're, we're talking on a phone right now over satellites. Yeah, bouncing signals. You're not even sitting next to me. You're. Hour, at least an hour and a half away. Maybe let's just say two hours to be specific. You're two hours away from here, 
Uh, here we are talking, you know. It's, it's pretty cool. Anyway, so how does all this tie into uh, being nice? I think it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know. It's I guess it's knowing the difference between being nice and being a pushover. Yeah, all right. Uh, Why? So we talked earlier saying, uh, hey, you got a topic of mine. You said, oh, be nice. And you're like, I'm serious. And I, I laughed. But like, uh, what what triggered your mind towards that? Like, ah, be nice. Like, was somebody not nice to you? Ah, not even. Um, so what was it about? No, I think it was, it was that part in the documentary that was... Um, the, the, the film guy asked Jordan, like, like, pretty much asking him, like, how does he feel about, you know, being considered nice when there's like stories of him not being nice and being really hard on his teammates. But, you know, he pretty much broke it down by like never asking his teammates to do something he wouldn't do. And it was just more like. If you don't want to play how I want to play, then go away. And yeah. and I get that, but yeah. that mean that means you might not be considered nice. But yeah, yet, I think it's what the overall goal. Like he was trying to, he was try, he was on a mission. Yeah. And if, from day one, if you're not on the mission too, then you know that's that could be a problem down the line. So it's yeah. almost like yeah, cutting cutting you off right now before. It's too late. Well, if, now, if you can't now, handle now the, he's the, world, the, now, world renowned because of it. Yeah. I guess it's like, you know, like, you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen kind of yeah. type type yeah. shit, but... Yeah. And he's, and he's like head chef. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I guess, no, like, uh, can, you, can you be head chef and nice? Uh... <laughs> I mean, if someone's fucking up, I, I, I think you're, if you're and head anything, you're kind of trying to rule. It's you. It usually ends up being with an iron fist, <laughs> ruling with an iron fist. Yeah, I mean, what do they say? Like too many, yes. too many chefs, not enough. No, it was uh, too many Indians, not enough chiefs. Yeah, but it's kind of, it's like you can't. Someone has to take charge, right? And someone has to pull rank. Yeah, and somebody has to be the asshole. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. You got to be the asshole. Uh, like, really? Like, really? Yeah, like, you're, you're right, right, but it's just... To, it, it, it's unpleasant, but it's the truth. Uh, yeah, like, no, I've been... Somebody has to wind up with, with the ass face. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so that was kind of why it was. I had that topic because you know when they say like nice guys finish last, or I mean, there's all these uh, yeah. these things that you know when they say nice guy or even the the other day it was like when a guy says to a girl like I'm a nice guy like. <laughs> like why it doesn't seem so because you gotta say it like why do you yeah, gotta I mean, yeah. it's like you're not a nice guy cause you're, you why do you gotta sell it yeah, I mean yeah. why do you why do you yeah. gotta you had to prove almost, it it's like, oh yeah so I mean I guess it was more just a term and and I mean not to say there's nothing wrong with being nice cause it's like I think nice is kinda what we will prefer sometimes, you know. <laughs> but I guess it's not always um, effective to be nice. That's what I'm saying. But it's, I mean, I think it was just all of that. Like you know, like when you got a, when you got a goal in mind and you're trying to achieve it, you know you're. You're willing to be that person. Like you said, the asshole. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, I mean, that was, that was the gist of, you know, why I was saying that. Because, yeah. um, I don't know, I was having a conversation with my friend Marion, like, a few, a few, like, last year. And I still remember it because it was like, like, I'm not, I'm friendly, but it's, it's very few who are my close friends, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm nice, but I don't know if I'm... <laughs> How do you get nice. if you're nice? And no, no, I mean, I'm just saying, like... Or, like what, what equates well, nice? Like how do you how do you reach that level? What do you do to be nice? Like hey, how's it going? You throw a smile on. Like, hey, I don't, here's looking at you, bro. Maybe it's like you don't <laughs> you don't apply no social pressure. It's just sort of like I accept you for who you are. And it's okay. I'm not a sexist. Like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> I'm safe. Right. I'm a male figure, but it's all right. Put your hands up. You gotta put your hands up. Like, hey. I don't know. I don't know. I don't Maybe know. I don't. Maybe I might don't know what it's what it means to be nice. Eh. But I think I do. I don't know. I think it's one of those like actions speak louder than words. Yeah, and. You know, but I don't go around saying I'm nice because sometimes I'm what comes out of my mouth is not always nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You got me. Huh. So I guess is being nice even a thing? Uh, I, man. It se- it seems to involve everything, like we're we're all human, and everything we're doing is kind of equates to being human. But what yeah. the hell? What the hell is human like? I was gonna say uh, I was just not gonna say that. Um, like I guess the difference between us and the animals in the jungle is uh, we have manners. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, right. But not everybody falls through on those manners, I guess, or animals. Um, animals. Are those certain ways of doing things? So I mean, and uh, and that's not nice, you know. <laughs> hey, <laughs> but that's not I don't know. Nice. I mean, it, I mean, it is kind of like this. I guess it's like you be nice to me, I'll be nice to you. Type. Yeah, it's kind of how they set us up. That that's at least what I expect, you know. Like, hey, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna approach you nicely. You know, I'm gonna approach you nicely, and uh, you be nice, and I'll be nice, right? Um, <laughs> it's it's almost like a social contract. Uh, I mean, I think that's that's like, what makes us humans. I think, or at least, yeah. I mean, I guess, what does it take for you to be not nice? <laughs> I, th- I think when somebody grabs my shirt or puts their hands on me, uh, okay. then it's like, okay, all bets are off. Yeah. It's yeah. no longer being nice. <laughs> I mean, okay. You put your hands on this. Like, All, right. All right. This comes next. Yeah, that's uh, it's kind of so kind of crazy how like one action can change the the key. Yeah. This this the cir- circumstance the, like the, the, uh, the, the, hey 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 this is yeah like I, I've had I've had people snarl in my face before and nothing happened 
that I had somebody shove me, you know, trying to hurt me. And then mm. it became a lot more than that. And, yeah. Uh, Uh, no, uh, I, I don't know, you know, if somebody bumps into you and they don't mean you any harm, you're like, oh, it's okay. And then sometimes somebody will shove you in the wall and you're just like, I'm going to shove you back. Oh, okay. But as far as being nice, like, I almost feel like, uh... <sighs> alright, so overall, I think like we're still we're still animals like to think we're not like we're we're all the the same soup here you know like we're all part of it we mm. all have we all have the dna of of animals on earth yeah to deny, like to deny to it's like all right if if chimpanzees just started wearing clothes and talking well, we'd be like, oh, you're still an animal? It's like, no, they're just... They moved on. And that's all we are. Like, we're animals. We're animals. And no matter how many, like, weird-ass nuances that we develop as a culture, like hats and clothes and underwear, we're yeah. also still animals. So, like, when we... I think when we're... Uh, trying to be nice, I feel like we're complying more to like a uh, a structured form. Uh, yeah. We're we're becoming a bee in the hive, you know, like we're complying with the the status quo. We're like stepping in line uh. when you be nice. And I, I, I almost feel like whenever you say be nice, it's like it's connected to uh, not being who you are. And what's funny is like mm, if you're if you're yeah. just being who you are, why do you gotta feel sorry for that? Yeah, but because everybody I else expects to be left alone, to be themselves. Mm. Yeah, well, I think when it's different when you're, maybe the rules change when you're by yourself versus when there's multiple yeah. uh, personalities. Yeah, yeah. But the be nice, when someone says that, it's almost like, well, see, I see where you're going, but stop there because <laughs> it's right. like, you you've seen those green uh, installations on schools? It looks like a clover leaf. It's green and it says "Be nice." Uh, might have. Well, they're, they're everywhere. Like, there's even like stickers that people put on their cars, and it's like a green. It looks like a clover, and it says "Be nice." I think I know what you're talking about. What is that? What do you think about that? I mean, I've never really looked into it, but I mean, I think of be kind. What, 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 what do you think the point <laughs> of that is? Like, what do you think they're trying to get out of it by putting that on their car? Like, hey, I'll be uh, nice, and hey, if you want to be nice, I'll be. I'm into being nice. And I, I don't I, know. I show I mean, you I, that. You, with, you just see that on cars. Car. Yeah. Or you see it cars. everywhere. They've built like hardcore, inst like artistic installations on the sides of schools, with like wow. broken mirrors and mosaics and paint saying "Be nice," and it looks uh, exactly the same. It's like, a, it's, it's like a clover leaf, and people. I know what you're saying, but too. I think I, to me that's ans that's that's answering to the whole bullying, like is yeah. That's yeah, a that's a thing right. in school nowadays. Well, I mean, it's always been a thing in school, bullies. But like, I don't want to say like you need a bully or it's cool to be a bully. But I think it got a little out there to where now, like shit, they gotta put up a sign that says "Be nice" because because <laughs> uh, we forget. Because so you're hearing a lot of shit about kids getting bullied. I mean, I know it's 
So, hey, be but nice. There's different. I mean, because I saw I, I saw this video of this kid that was being like tormented, and and he was like talking about killing himself because he was being bullied that hard. Yeah. So, but then yes. I think of like you know someone just taking it out of out of line by what someone said to them and. They're so fragile that it's like, and and they're allowed to feel that. I mean, I'm not saying it's it's, it's a very, I think it's a gray. It's not black and white. There's a lot of things that need to be considered. But yeah, the whole bullying thing is, like even the schools in in San Simone, it's like we're a no bullying school. But I think bullying got so bad that they had to like almost make it a campaign like hey we're not moving this year like, yeah, oh. yeah. take it easy it's just like I think it was like with with dare you know and like don't yeah. do drugs <laughs> and this year I job. was like be nice don't bully but uh yeah a lot of those things are have always been a thing in school but I mean I don't know like Maybe your 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 experience with bullying might be different than mine, but I uh, I look I look back on those times and kind of be like, you know, I I got something from it. Like I had to uh, kind of yeah. sometimes stand up for myself. You know, sometimes had to know when. Hey, this is I mean, I might need to get help from somebody. You know, but. Yeah. It, I don't know what I also noticed is that when I didn't really pay attention to it that those people kind of like wanted to like almost chill with me rather than bully me. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. It was, I guess it was it's like I think sometimes people test you and you could take it as bullying or you could just not pay attention to it but then I don't know, but I, I there might be someone that will say, "Hey, I'm a bully," and I'm, I won't even be aware of it because probably how we talk is, I think it's okay, but to them it's not. Hmm. I don't know, but go ahead and chime in, man, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you like, listening to you, like man. I what, so so say these questions pop up and you're alone and you're thinking to yourself like oh how do how do I feel about this when I've been doing that like just thinking like oh how do I feel about that and you know dig dig deep down like what would that make me feel about like how. What does that add up to? And, uh, I always come back to that, like, animalistic side. Yeah. It's like, like, I don't know, I, I would say it's stronger than, uh, I, 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 all right, can you imagine if, if suddenly dolphins, they're intelligent. We know they are. Yeah. What if they suddenly started speaking? Or what if they suddenly started, like, building houses underwater? Almost like beavers or something. Like, what if, what if they just suddenly started doing that and organizing? Like, like how would we treat that? Like, like, like. I feel I feel like being nice is like a construct like like something taught to it's it, let's say humanize like uh. the difference like we call ourselves humans that's the difference between us and maybe like a you know like a a beaver a mammal another mammal I'm bringing up dolphins like it's like they're intelligent beings, it's obvious on so many species and 
when, it, when like if they started talking, we would be like, oh hey, you got to be nice, but like it's like all right, they're they're pigs or they're wolves or they're all these things that we've grown up knowing as animals, and they're like, like oh like we teach them be nice. What what would you be teaching them? Hey, be nice. Don't you know? Don't don't cut in on somebody. Don't go out to hurt other people. Don't do all these things. But it's like we all have instincts as animals, as yeah. well. I I think a lot of times, a lot of times when I think about it hard, it, it all seems so absurd. I just kind of like a, a waste of time. Because us, us as beings, we're, we have a limited timeline. Yeah. And it doesn't stop going. It just keeps going. Yeah, but then I think, too, like, I'm not saying, like, um, I be, I'm nice to get things that I want, but I... I guess if I were if I were an animal in the jungle, I don't know if I would be a fucking lion or a cheetah or something. I might I might have to do some swindling and some I might have to do some nice things to some something <laughs> to get what I want. I don't know. Well, I just, well, to begin with, in order to eat, but I think I think being nice. I think being nice is just phrasing it in 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 a process that's way bigger to where you're. You might be on some animalistic shit, you know, but you're like we're we're being strategic about it. Mm. But I don't know. I mean, when you say animalistic, he's you saying like everybody just like being dogs and well, and, like, I, 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 I'm, I'm saying these <laughs> these traits don't go away. Like we we've evolved, we've evolved. We're we're talking on some cell phones right now that we're designed by people humans yeah. and uh we've evolved but like to act like we've lost our entire instincts on top of that like there's still there's still something to that there's it's still alive in us mm. like all of us every single living thing plant you know matter maybe not matter in general but dna mm. We all have DNA, and they're all re interrelated. Mm. And we're, we're, it's almost like we're all um, outcomes. Like, like if you ever tried to figure out a combination on a lot, you just keep going through the patterns. What you know, one 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 one, one 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 two, one 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 three, and you just keep going and mixing it up until you come up and. Until what? Until what happens? Like mm. we're we're all outcomes of that, and suddenly we think we're evolved or above a dolphin or a badger. I mean, they're not. They don't have jobs. They're not. They're, <laughs> you know, they're not going to work every day. Well, they're not so, getting paid. There, there's Dobermans. Like how you know? we get paid? There's <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, what is what does the uh, German Shepherd get? You know, what's his cut? And all this shit on the border, you know. <laughs> so I don't, I, I don't know. Like I, I always go there. I, I always go there in my mind. Like what, what else are we talking about here? Like mm. we're talking about human behavior, which, which seems to me to be like a socializing effort, like a group, a group, a group effort to socialize a bunch of animals. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, we're still I'm animals. Like we're still animals. To think we're more than that is is grandiose, almost. I mean, yes, we have thumbs. Yes, we speak. Yes, we're building all this shit. But we all have DNA. We're all made of the same shit, and we all like. There's an interrelationship going on there, and I often think. Being what about nice, like being nice is outside of that? It's an addition to. It's what, a part of our. 
What what were you about to say? What about? No, uh, what about um? I guess like humanity is like the arts and the music and animals ain't doing that, you know? They ain't, I mean, yeah, they, they are. are. Whales, whales sing. I mean, not on. I get. I don't know. Birds chirp, you know. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, but I think, I think maybe we're, go, maybe ain't we're going back it to and waves. listening to it later. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> where else got these big ass cell phones on? Uh, Best Buy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh I, I gotta know. get this on tape. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, like, yeah, I get what you're saying. I guess, I don't know. Um, but what about like, like a mother, a motherly, I don't know, cheetah taking out, looking after her cubs and like bathing them and playing with them and is that just nothing? Like that's not being nice or being, uh, I think now we're just talking semantics here, like, I think mothering and, like, uh, having a connection with, with something that came out of a woman, like this new being, I think when they get, So, a mother like, Chia is not, uh, it's not the same as a mother human? No, I think it is. Like, like I think that whole part is why we're... Why we mother our own children? Like why we have this great connection to our our kids? They're oh. connected to us. They're made of us. But they've taken I, one part of my DNA and one part of their parents' DNA, and they formed a completely are, new. Are person. you going to tell your kid not to be nice? Like I'm going to. I mean, fuck yes. <laughs> It's kind of... Because there's plenty of... Uh, I don't want to be in a, in a restaurant and he's running around hitting people with sticks and shitting, <laughs> shitting in the punch bowl, you know? Yeah. So I'm going to teach him, you better sit your ass down while we're in a fucking restaurant, like, so... Uh, or around I mean, other people out in public, thing. like, you need to chill the fuck out. <laughs> But then again, like that's that's a human thing. It's not a, it's not a lion. Well, you know, I bet there is, there are, there are, there are in the animal kingdom, uh, older animals that are, you know get the kids in check. They you know they check them. Yeah. Isn't them checking them like? Kind hey, of hey nice be thing. nice. I'm being violent, but be nice. I'm using violence to to be nice to you. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think it's this is a pretty interesting. Um, thing <laughs> I, this avenue, this avenue, I mean, the kind of, of yeah. I just this this credits. Are everything humans do. Some seems like it, but I don't know. Because I can't, well, I can't think of any like group of animals where I'm impressed of their artwork or, you know, their good, their good uh, sportsmanship. You know, like. All right. So I'm. Sportsmanship. I can't. What What about? Or go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. You can't what? I mean, I can't. I can't make the full connection that we're tied to that and <laughs> us being nice is is us kind of following a. <laughs> But I don't know. Maybe that's exactly what I'm saying. I don't know. 
guess it's just I always remember it be nice. I remember hearing that all the time. But be nice to your cousin. Be nice to yeah. your brother. Be nice to your sister. You know, what? I, I would teach that right now. I think what it comes down to is is keeping us human. Mm. Because when we lose our tempers and start, like, stomping around and yelling and screaming and slamming fucking doors. Oh, yeah. That, that's the gorilla, you know, the, the lion, the fucking, the animal in us where we just tear around the the fucking gorilla mo- most of all the the alpha chimp mm. starts tearing around and screaming and making noise and shoving each other's around so like being nice is almost like fighting that hey instead of instead of ripping off somebody's fingers and genitals why don't you just be nice and <laughs> hanging out at the same time in the same place uh-huh. in public so you don't embarrass your mom and your dad yeah or yeah, I'll, I'll rip your ass you know yeah Whoa. yeah yeah no I I kinda I, I, I think what you're saying makes sense then you got it. What um? What do you think will happen down the road from now when it comes to manners and being nice? What? Say 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 we're constantly evolving. So, and then we move forward like a thousand years. What do you think is going to come up being nice? Mm. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I think there might be some, well, maybe like in, like in different households, things might be different. But like I know for, I mean, I see it now, like, for, there's no electronics at the table. Um, I don't know. Do you guys? You know. Do you, do you guys eat at the table together? <laughs> so, I feel a little bad admitting this, but like, almost from the beginning, I would make my son noodles and just lay the noodles on the table. There'd be no plate, and I'd eat them with him. <laughs> what do you mean? And in the end, like it was like that's what he expected. You know, no spoon, no fork, no bowl, just noodles. So what? Like, it was like it was like the both of us were eating off the table. Ah, and I have bowls. I have all this shit, but it's like ah, noodles. Like I cool them off for him, and I just hand them to him, and he'd eat. I kind of feel bad, like, you know, half the time he's going back to his mom's house and, like, they're they're using spoons and forks and he's over there like, hey, just lay him on the table, I got this. <coughs> oh, man. Uh, well. Alright, all right, but I've hugged him and loved on him from the day he was born. Yeah. Even before that, I'd rub his mom's stomach, you know, like, my boy, and I'd talk to him. Yeah. And he knew it when he came out. What about at your, at your mom's spot? What about it? Or do you guys eat at a table together? Uh, there's no... T- oh, shit, when I was a kid, we we put time aside to eat at the table. Like, in, in the house you lived in, that's where we had table time. Yeah. And then we moved to Colfields, and we would do. We did. I don't think we even did that when we moved to Colfields, just just on holidays. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And um, damn, like now that I'm thinking about it, I think that was the only time we'd eat together 
and talk about our days and like it, there was a difference. Yeah, I, I, I I'm I happy know. to say I had that, and that's what I would want for my boy. So, what we've been doing lately is that I've been like, you know, he's addicted to the phone. He's always like, "Your phone, your phone." He just keeps repeating himself. I'm like, no, let's turn it off and eat together, like a couple, yeah. like a couple of hogs. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> But anyway, like yeah. Well, I mean, you're 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 kind of already in the future, like. Who? You, like, kind of raising a kid and or a young young kid, like now with you know how we're making all these advancements and technology and. Yeah. Shit, he he's glued to it already. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying like. I mean, I just teach. There's still those human connections and human rituals that are like, like eating at the table. I, I mean, mean I, it might not seem important, but I think yeah. it is. Like later down the line, like, all right. As far as like, at least in my house, if or in my where I'm at, I think that would always be something. If, there's no technology at the table when we're yeah. eating. And it's kind of like we're all eating. Well, how about this? I, I, got, I got a weird theory. It, it just kind of popped up in my head. Um, what if, back, back to animalistic, what if men are doing these things for women? Well, not being nice or no, being nice. Being nice. Uh, going uh, through these family rituals and and uh, making making the women happy. And that's a bad thing. Or it, just, no, yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying like what what if that were like our our driving force to improving ourselves from being animals. What if women are the reason we've come out of the wildernesses and, you know, produced families and became tight and all that? Like, but like the beginning, the basis, basis, most basic instinct was we wanted men. Men wanted women from the beginning, anyway. Like we we yeah. all want what we want now because we, we can afford that. Yeah. As, a, as a species, we can afford that. But I'm saying, like, back to animal instincts. Like, uh, what if all this... Holy crap. Seven... Oh, oh no, I got another hour. I, oh, my God. I, th I thought I was super late for work just now. Like, holy fuck. All right. Um, what if everything we've ever done to become human was really in the pursuit of a woman and women? And part, well, let's put it this way. So we're talking modern here. A partner, mm. a partner. What if, what if that's like the ultimate goal of being nice is to show somebody else that you can be nice and to invite them to be your partner, animalistically and humanly. I think you're, you might be onto something. Like if you, like if men were just out there like wild animals, we we would deteriorate very fast. Yeah. Without women, you know, like without uh, this, <laughs> without this desire to better ourselves, and really, it's women saying, "Yeah, you know what, you you could be nicer." Yeah, I just imagine like. I mean, I'm not trying to be chauvinistic or. Anything no, no, I it. just imagine like. Two cavemen fighting over a, a lady, and then a lady just kind of being like, like, "Yeah, you didn't have to beat him up, you know." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. You gotta eliminate that competition. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like, well, that's where my mind goes all the time. Like, I'm like. There's a parallel going on between well, us and animals, and at the same well, time, we're human. Well, and let I kinda, me. And I kind of wonder, like, like take us, your. Us let me try to get your theory 
I mean, what if like being nice is just a demonstration? Maybe not so much a man trying to get a woman, but a partner trying to get a partner. You know, like, yeah. Starting off as a nice person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Sh- shaking your feathers. See, I mean, that's the thing, though. We're it's shaking like, our feathers and being nice. <sighs> Like, hey, I'm a, like, good, I'm a good mate. I'm a good the mate. Film, I, I can I, be, I can be nice. I can be nice to your children and to you. Check out like, my feathers. The film, or like the gestures in film, like, I mean, giving someone flowers or, or laying down your coat and walking over a puddle. Like, there's these grand gestures of... <laughs> grand, grand gestures. Uh, of, of showing somebody that you're, you know, you're, you're feeling them. Yeah. Open the door. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, got, but, I, I got this, baby. Don't worry about it. I got this. Let me, let I me know, fix that, then, baby. I guess when you're being nice, I mean, are you being too nice when you're, I don't, you're just, you're just giving it away to everybody, uh, you know? I don't know. <laughs> are, you, are you like? You want to be nice. You want, you want you want what you want ultimately, and being nice is a way of getting that. I'm just saying, like, like I feel like being nice isn't animalistic. It isn't normal in nature. Mm. Although earlier we were talking about that, and I tried to bring up the idea of like. Uh, where well, you were saying you couldn't feel that connection, you couldn't but, cross that line of oh, it's not, awesome. I know there. I kind of do though. Well, what about like dolphins like saving us? Like there's stories of like people about to be attacked by sharks, but dolphins show up and save them. About, and, are you talking about flippers? You know, yeah. Well, flippers <laughs> out there, man. He's out there with uh, he's out there with Willie. I mean, I'm not, I'm not waiting on a dolphin to save me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, right here, right here uh, where I live in Tucson, a dolphin. I mean, save me. if they have a plan, <laughs> it's like I don't know, bro. I, I, I don't know how they could save me from what, you know. I think we just went off the rails here. I, yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah, I, I, I'm just saying being being nice just doesn't seem. It seems like a human trait. Anything else would be like, oh, I'm gonna be nice. No, I'm hungry. I'm gonna eat this motherfucker. Hmm. But you see shit in nature where yeah. things are working together and and they're almost like teaming up to get something else. You know, like like a bird cleaning an alligator's teeth. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I never seen that, but yeah, like the exactly. bird's eating and the alligator is like. But getting, how, why is that not nice? Body. Huh? <laughs> That's nice. Like, that is nice. All right, so, so I think I, I think we've proven already through this conversation <laughs> that being nice is in nature, I guess, and I keep going back like being animalistic is badass. Huh. Well, uh, I maybe. I mean, I think too that. I mean, I guess. What are you getting out of being nice? I guess. I think that's kind of. I think maybe the there partner. shouldn't even be a term to describe uh, it because. I'm thinking the ultimate motivation is the partner. Ah. Uh, yeah. The attention of another. Like, like, there's plenty of people who go, oh, I'm perfectly fine on my own, but, like, if they were to actually be separated from people entirely, uh, it's a different story. Huh. Yeah, I mean, you're right. You're right, um, bro. I mean, you're, you're pretty accurate on that, but I guess it's just... Is that the wrong way to approach no. it? Uh, all right, so now you're asking right or wrong. Where where my mind falls is uh, there's no such thing. Hmm. Nature or uh, right or wrong. Right or wrong. 
and just being. Yeah, we're obviously yeah, yeah. We're, I, we're, we're 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 obviously guided by how we feel. Uh, I I mean I'm trying to like I'm trying to justify things that because there are times when I've been nice and oh hey that equals that and that is. That is good, but I—I I guess me thinking about it now, I don't feel so nice. Yeah. Like, um. I got—I definitely got less patience. <laughs> <coughs> um. But was there ever a time when, like, someone was like? saying you were being a dickhead and you were being the opposite of nice and yet you were you were you were actually had a, yes their interests at mind or like yes you had a reason to why someone might say you were being not nice I was trying to be nice and they're like fuck you I'm like oh, okay uh, my bad. Yeah, definitely. Uh, when it comes to that, like, what what the hell are you supposed to do? Like, I I had I had a dream once of uh, brains. Brains. Brains with uh, spinal columns hanging from them. Uh, eyeballs, and, you know, the ear bones, and they're just floating in space. And what it was was an intelligence and awareness with senses, but no bodies. And, you know, the, uh, um, what's the cartoon with Bender and Fry? The makers of The Simpsons that made that same show. Mm. Teen Titan? Uh, nah. Um. Layla and Fry and the Professor. Oh. And Zoe uh, Berg. Come on, dude. It's so obvious. It's on the Aqua tip Chain, of the top. Aqua. No. I don't know. I, I think I know what you're talking That's about. This was Bender. Like... Futurama. Oh, Futurama. Yeah. They did, a, they did an episode with brains that just kind of showed up. And I'm saying, like, at some point, my perception like I, I thought about it and I think it came to me in a dream and I was like man what if uh, like we're talking about atoms and uh, matter and all that and like it, it's like alright we're, we're made up of the same stuff but like there's a difference between solids gases and liquids like you can't put a solid through a solid kind of thing and uh I imagine just all just being these aware beings that are just brains, eyes, ears, and spinal columns, and we're interacting with the world around us. And I don't even know why I brought that up. I'm just saying, like... Yeah, well, we're talking about being not nice and, <laughs> well, and having... There but having good, maybe having good intentions, but from the outside of someone else, it's. I feel like I'm way off all of a sudden. But yeah, you said I had I, a dream. There, there was a con <laughs> there was a connection, and it was yeah. like, all right, well, I I thought about us. Be I I guess it was that we were just that. We we're ner a nervous system with a brain interacting and that's all we were and atoms were something additional something that you know matter was additional to what we actually are 
And when I thought about that, it just kind of like simplified identity, I guess. Mm. What we are. Well, I mean, I guess if like, like, we, like, like if we're all made of atoms, what the fuck is the brain? If we're all just made of little electrical impulses and electrons, what the fuck are we? And then, and then, like, you get to a concept of just being nice, and it's like, how the hell does that play into it? Hmm. I mean, we were talking about loving science earlier, and I'm like, man, there's... I, I always have these thoughts of, like, the bigger picture, like, what the hell are we? And, like, that's why I'm so interested in, like, space travel and exploration of other planets, because it's like, there's... So much more going on, and we're like ants on an anthill, all yeah. by our, all by ourselves, distracted by the the jobs we're doing and all that. And there's so much more out there. I I think you hit it on the nose earlier with like kind of expecting or trying to get a uh, attention of a uh, partner or potential yeah. partner, but yeah, like like animals. Yeah, but I'm saying like in your dream, how if you if like if we can't give in each other anything, this this being nice go out the window because it's sort of like yeah, you know we're we're yeah, not we're, we're that's, simplified. Like my membrane isn't helping your your membrane, <laughs> spinal cord. You know, yeah, it's like our, we're all yeah. in our own. Well, I, I mean, I think that's. I don't know, like, the world we live in where we're, you know, we got bank accounts and bank taxes and we're doing a podcast, you know, we're like doing all these other extra things that yeah. are maybe not related to the animalistic side of, of us and... Being nice is just playing more into that. We're not. We're not. We're not going back to that animalistic side. We're. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I think I'm being lost on everything we're talking about. But man, we we've been um, in and out of it. Uh, I I think we're at my time limit here. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think we're at a good stopping point. We kind of we kind of went off the rails, got back on, went off again, like. <laughs> I think we need to listen to this again later and just like come back to it. Like, what yeah. do uh? Nah, cause it's when, when you, you think What about like Christmas? Like, you know, you're on the naughty or nice list. You know, you're <laughs> you know, it's sort of ingrained in this. Yeah. Well, I would like, I, like, I'm a scientist through and through, and I, I would like to say there's no such thing, you know, like, like, oh, there's not, but like, like we've proven already, like you see it in, in, in animals in the wild. This nice, this uh, taking care of other people. Oh. And hell, that's, that's what my job that I want right now is all about. I just. Going out and helping people. So yeah. I I like the concept of us being animalistic. And at the same time, I like thinking about how absurd it is to be nice. Yeah. But at the same time, I'd rather be around a bunch of people who are being nice than a bunch of assholes. Yeah, they're trying to steal your shit. Yeah. Or fuck you up, or get in your face, or shove their shit down your throat, like. Yeah. So I mean. So. I like nice people. I like you. Yeah. You're nice. Most hey, of the fuck time. Fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you with that nice shit. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. The fuck uh, nah, you. I. I think you hit it again with, I mean, we're not going to, I mean, 
What? It's it's you, there's this topic goes in all those different directions because it's like I'll be nice to and it goes back to that being friendly versus having friends. You know, like I could be nice and generous, but yeah, I'm it's don't get that confused with someone that I'm that's really someone I'm connected with that. You know, I'll do anything. You know, uh, that's like family, kind of. Yeah. Hmm. Well, got me I guess are we, are we... What about being nice to family? Is, is yeah. that a different type of niceness I, versus... I, I think we got it. This, uh, <laughs> what, what you just said right there, I started thinking about family and like friends, old friends that I haven't talked to. I was like, damn it. Yeah, no, nah, this gotta, is. Gotta reach out. I, I, I think we covered it, man. Yeah, this is a sub. Uh, I, I think there's something that, that should a always be a, an ongoing. Nice guy podcast. Like, this is a nice guy podcast? <laughs> oh, and so now we'll start a sub, uh, a sub. Uh, oh, we'll, just, we'll have a <laughs> podcast just about being nice. Yeah. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> All right, brother. Let's uh, let's call it, man. I gotta get ready for work. Uh, let's shoot. Let's shoot for the weekend or something. Look. I, I can't wait till Wednesday, man. Every every week, I'm just looking forward to it. This is episode yeah. Oh, yeah. number eight. This is episode number eight. Damn. I can't believe it. But, yeah, man, let's figure this out because I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, I, I'm invested. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to show, or at least hear it because... I haven't heard any of it. Oh, yeah. Well, like I said, I, I got the uh, equipment for it now. Let's knock nice. this shit out. All right, all right. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit the button. All right, bro. Peace. You hanging up? No, I'm just hitting the fucking recording oh. button.